From supervolcanoes to mysterious event X's and Norway almost murdering everyone on Earth. These are the times humanity almost went extinct. Toba Supervolcano It can be tough to find a mate in today's high-stress world, but it was never tougher than after the Toba Supervolcano event, where there might have been as many as 1,000 reproductive adults left on the entire face of the Earth. 72,000 years ago, modern humanity had hit its stride. Our brains were now basically the same form they'd be in when inventing the space shuttle and Fortnite, arguably a step backwards in our evolution. We'd long ago left the savannas of Africa and started to spread around the world. We were using spears to hunt with, and stone tools were today's iPhone. And it wouldn't be long until we invented the wheel, space travel, and the Star Trek Galactic Federation. But one supervolcano in Indonesia had different plans for humanity. Sometime around 70,000 BC, the Toba supervolcano blew its top, resulting in one of the largest single-event volcanic eruptions humanity is aware of until Yellowstone blows its top sometime next week after you watch this video. The eruption blew an astonishing 1,700 cubic miles of vaporized rock into the atmosphere, or the equivalent of 3 million Empire State Buildings. This resulted in a layer of ash half a foot thick, falling all over the South Pacific area. Within days, the ash had suffocated all plant life and poisoned all the water, dooming every human in the region. Being further away from the eruption, however, was no guarantee of survival, as the supervolcano eruption had global consequences. The explosion pumped tons of gas and debris into the atmosphere, so much that it actually blocked sunlight. This led to a global cooling effect on the average of 3 to 5 degrees Celsius, between 5.4 to 9 degrees Fahrenheit though in some places the temperature fell as much as 18 degrees for several years. This would be devastating for a lot of plant life and may have even triggered an ice age. Even survivors well outside the blast zone would have still contended with the highly acidic rain and snow which would poison water supplies. The sudden temperature swings would have completely upset migratory behavior of large animals who would begin starving off after failure of local plant life. While it's likely very few humans died directly from the massive explosion, the aftermath nearly doomed humanity to extinction. One study estimates there were just about 1,000 adult humans capable of breeding left, while another drops that number down to just 40. What's clear from the genetic record is that right around the Toba catastrophe, humanity experienced a genetic bottleneck, which brought us incredibly close to total extinction. Toba is believed to be the reason why so many different species of humans also went extinct, and why today there's only one surviving intelligent great ape, other than Bigfoot, of course. Toba's absolute decimation of the human gene pool could have potentially set humanity back tens of thousands of years in development. If it wasn't for Toba, you could have been enjoying Star Trek Federation-level technology right now instead of slaving away like a modern peasant. The explosion also helped wipe out other types of humans and led to a world where only a single intelligent great ape would survive. If it weren't for Toba, there's a chance today's society would have multiple intelligent types of humans, which would have been neat but probably just made us murder the absolute hell out of each other, so, you know, silver lining. Event X, 1.2 million years ago. Modern humans evolved a few hundred thousand years ago, but humanity almost didn't get a chance to get that far down the evolutionary process. In 2009, scientists used DNA to read back on human history and help fill in some holes in the history books. In all DNA, there are some sequences known as mobile genetic elements, or small bits of DNA that move around and multiply within the genome. Using a slide rule and a microscope, spoiler alert, nobody on the infographic staff knows how genetic research works, scientists are able to use these bits of DNA to help piece together our genetic past. What they found was shocking. About 1.2 million years ago, something was seriously wrong with the Homo genus. Amongst various members of the Homo genus, including Homo ergaster and Homo erectus, there was only a population of about 26,000. Not in one area, but on the entire face of the Earth. Incredibly, that's about half the total capacity of Rome's Colosseum, and about how many total gorillas are left in the wild today. How could several highly successful species have such a low population number? Archaeological evidence proves that our ancestors were living all across Africa and Eurasia, and they'd already begun using stone tools. There are two theories. The first is that some mysterious Event X nearly wiped out humanity from the face of the Earth, leaving the surviving species of man with only a few thousand members each. However, no definitive event can be linked back to this cause in the archaeological or geological record, and there's no link between other species and a subsequent mass dying. 
What then could have targeted the Homo genus and only the Homo genus and nearly driven us to extinction, almost like an orchestrated culling? A second theory is that these population numbers actually represent a sort of steady state for the early Homo species. This population size isn't an anomaly, but rather the average population for the time. This conflicts somewhat with the widespread evidence we have for the spread of all the Homo species and the risk of sudden extinction from such catastrophically low numbers for species spread out over such a vast area. However, given that humans actually have literally zero natural weapons except our brains, we can sort of get behind the idea that early Homo species sucked so bad at fighting off animals that we struggled to survive, meaning humanity basically just barely eked by. Mother Nature had a chance to kill us off in Mr. Shot. And now we're making her pay for it. Next time someone asks you to recycle, remind them that this is our shot, and unlike Mother Nature, we're not hesitating. Our personal opinion is that there was indeed some mysterious event X that targeted the Homo genus and only the Homo genus. Consider the following. Why are all humans universally repulsed, disgusted, or terrified by multi-legged creepy crawling insects? And also share a common fear of the dark. Lastly, why are UFO phenomenon reported literally all around the world throughout human history? Did spider-like space aliens with multiple appendages raid human settlements at night and try to cull us but mysteriously stopped just short of complete extinction? We're not saying this did happen, but we are saying that science can't prove it didn't happen. The Black Death For over a decade, the bubonic plague had been ravaging Asia. But since Europe was writing most of the history books at the time, it didn't hit prime time until October of 1347. Twelve ships had docked at the Sicilian port of Messina and brought the world early Christmas presents possibly with them from Asia. The Black Death. Authorities would rush these ships out of the harbor, but it was too late. The cat was already out of the bag. Or more accurately, the flea-infested rats. This horrendous disease caused massive boils in the groin and under the armpits, which could grow as big as an apple according to witnesses. The massive boils could continuously weep blood and pus, while the victim suffered from chills, fever, vomiting, diarrhea, and aches and pains. Eventually, the victim would die, but likely not before spreading the disease to dozens of other people since humanity did not understand how plagues worked very well. There was no treatment for the plague, or rather there was, but basically it didn't do anything except make things worse and outright kill people. Common treatments included leeching or bleeding the making of small incisions in order to drain out the bad blood. Since nobody knew anything about germs, often these small incisions would hasten death by becoming infected themselves, or the plague could spread from one victim to another thanks to the repeated use of a bleeding tool without proper sanitation. Other treatments which perhaps wouldn't kill you but were completely useless included laying in bath water with fresh flowers and various oils, proving that even in plague-infested Middle Ages Europe, Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop brand could have found a way to turn a profit by selling useless products. Things got so bad that most people began to suspect that the plague was a punishment from God. This prompted the short-lived flagellant movement, which included mass groups of men who would travel from town to town, whipping themselves as an act of penance for the world's sins. The men would beat themselves with heavy leather straps that were embedded with sharp pieces of metal and repeat the process three times a day for 33 and a half days. Then they'd pack their bags and move on to the next town, hoping to atone for humanity through their suffering. The movement was eventually ended by the Pope, not because he cared about the men whipping themselves for man's sins, but because flagellants who were willing to suffer for the people had become a lot more popular than that rich, corrupt papacy. Estimates on its death toll vary from 75 million to 200 million, which would have been over half the human population. Rapidly losing half of your population is a slippery slope to extinction. But luckily, humanity's gradual adopting of sanitary practices and technology dramatically reduced the effects of the plague. While it never really went away, you can still get it today, the plague never resurfaced as furiously as it did in the 14th century. What really limited its effectiveness and saved humanity's bacon, though, is the fact that at the time the plague wasn't very good about getting around. Long distance travel was limited to ship, and many human populations at the time were extremely isolated in relation to each other. Only merchants, soldiers, and political figures undertook regular journeys, severely limiting transmission vectors and routes for the plague. Were a new disease as virulent and deadly as the plague to strike today, we only have to look to COVID to know that within months, most of humanity would have been wiped out. Nuclear Holocaust 1995 The Norwegians are a hardy and on the whole generous and kind people. That's why it's a shame they almost murdered every person on the earth. 
In 1995, the Cold War had officially been over for four years. The West had won the showdown between capitalism and communism, and the frost-thawed relations were slowly warming between Russia and the US. For 40 years, the specter of nuclear war had hung over the world, with psychological effects so profound that some psychiatrists believe it had measurable effects on the evolution of the modern world. But that was all over now. Then, on January 25, 1995, the end nearly came for humanity. Just a few hours before dawn, a rocket lifted off from the Andoya rocket range off the northwest coast of Norway. The sounding rocket contained scientific experiments as part of a study of the Aurora Borealis by a joint Norwegian and American team, and Norway had alerted the Russians to the launch well in advance. However, those notifications never made it up the proper channels, and within seconds of the rocket lifting off, Russian long-range radar had already detected it. For Russian radar operators, it was the sum of all fears. The rocket behaved exactly like a US submarine-launched Trident nuclear missile and incredibly took the exact same trajectory already predicted to be taken in a first US strike against Russia. In the event of a nuclear war, it was expected that the first launch would come from a US submarine and intended to detonate high in the atmosphere and take out Russian early warning radar and communications with an EMP blast. Minutes later, American Minutemen intercontinental ballistic missiles would rain down hellfire across Russia, and Russia could do nothing to defend itself. The Russian civilization would be wiped off the map within 15 minutes, and only a handful of Russian nukes would ever get off the ground in retaliation. Due to the low resolution of Russian radars, they were unable to determine the size of the rocket's stages, which would have helped identify the rocket as a real Trident missile or not. Russian radar could only track the speed and trajectory, and as the Norwegian-sounding rocket entered a flight corridor used by American Minutemen missiles, Russian computers made a match with a Trident missile. To add to the terrible coincidences, the sounding rocket even released a nose cone at an extremely similar altitude and speed to a Trident missile. Within minutes of the launch, the Russian nuclear football was placed in front of Russia's then-president Boris Yeltsin. He had a fateful decision to make, and every second he hesitated, Russia's ability to retaliate diminished. As soon as the American Trident missile's nuclear payload exploded, Russian early warning radar would be knocked out. Secondary attacks would wipe out Russian nuclear ballistic missile fields a few minutes after that. Concurrent with strikes on Russia's ballistic missiles would be strikes on major communication nodes and Moscow itself. Then would come the Air Force bases housing Russia's airborne nuclear strike force. Yeltsin's ability to communicate with his nuclear forces, however, would have been eliminated well before that. If Russia were to retaliate, it was now or never. A heated discussion erupted. Yeltsin needed more information, but Russian radar, lagging a little bit behind American radar, simply couldn't give it. The military was adamant. Russia had to respond while it still could. But Yeltsin couldn't for the life of him figure out why the US would strike unexpectedly. He made his decision. Russia would not retaliate. For the next few minutes, every senior official aware of the early morning crisis held their breath and waited for new reports to come in, or to not come in. If the attack was real, they would never hear of it because the EMP blast would knock out communications with any unit within visual range of the actual detonation. The only way that they would know that the end of the world had indeed begun was when satellite confirmation of nuclear launches in the US reached them, if the EMP blast didn't knock out those receiving stations as well. It could very well be that Yeltsin and his staff would never even know the nuclear war had begun. Blinded and cut off from all communications by a massive EMP blast, the only warning they would have is the sudden dawning of an artificial sun directly over the Kremlin, followed by almost immediate, complete atomization. No EMP blast ever came, and working backwards, Russian computers calculated the launch site as a Norwegian rocket base, the last place US forces would fire a nuclear weapon from. Thankfully, due to the end of the Cold War, the US and Russia had been on much friendlier terms than normal, but had the incident occurred just four years earlier, it's extremely likely the world would have ended in atomic hellfire. Now go check out worst natural disasters in human history, or click this other video instead.